Hey guys, welcome back to Dixie Bell's YouTube channel and welcome back to another FFT Friday. It's Lauren here from Furniture Flipping Teacher and today we are going to be making over this mid-century style dresser using Dixie Bell's silk paint. My first step as always is to remove the hardware and clean the dresser and remove any paper that's inside that has been in there for probably longer than I've been alive. The reason I removed the hardware first is so that I can make sure to clean underneath where this hardware has also been for a very long time. It's rare that hardware is removed unless it's replaced and this looks like the original hardware just because of the style. Sometimes that older hardware is a little bit more stubborn to remove because the screws were made differently back then and so a lot of the times you're gonna need the flathead screwdrivers just to get into the little grooves. This is interesting. For these pieces of hardware, I would think that there was only one screw per handle, but there's actually two screws. So that's kind of a lot. It's like a one inch center to center. That's something I've never seen before. And now that we've got the hardware out, we're going to go ahead and clean. Since I'm going to be utilizing the silk paint line from Dixie Bell, I'm also going to be using the silk paint cleaner which is called pristine clean and this works a lot like white lightning so I'm just going to open it and drizzle a little bit into my water mix it around and that will dissolve thus making a cleaner for my furniture. need to rinse off wherever we clean because we need to get that cleaning residue off of the surface. One area you also don't want to forget is the insides and especially especially when you can actually see the dust from over the years you just need to make sure that you're cleaning even when you can't see it from the outside. Okay, we're all rinsed, so I'm gonna get my sander out. I'm gonna scuff sand some areas, while in some areas I'm going to be sanding all the way down to the raw wood. that it's gonna really pay off in the end. I ended up sanding down the top and then this first little separator wood piece right here to the bare wood. And unfortunately, I wasn't quite careful enough when I got to the front, so I did break through the veneer just a tad bit. So what I'm planning on doing instead of leaving it like that is to do a wood wash with some paint. And so that won't take much longer, but that will also just even out that coloring of the top and this middle piece right here. While in the other spots, I am going to be painting it with Serenity Silk Paint. I 
did decide to go ahead and sand down these legs to be the same bare neutral color. So I will do the wood stain paint wash on these as well. But my next step, I'm gonna wipe back all the dust and we are going to get to painting some blue. It's kind of a bluish grayish, the Silk Serenity. First thing that you wanna do before actually painting is to just mix up the paint, make sure all of the parts are mixed because sometimes they like to settle at the bottom, especially in all-in-one paints. A lot of the times the top coat likes to settle. So just make sure that you're stirring them and mixing them really well before you use them. And I'm gonna be using my Scarlet brush to paint on the silk paint. With the silk paint, you wanna be really careful. You don't wanna overwork the paint because that's gonna cause brush strokes. Otherwise, if you don't overwork it, then it's awesome paint and it self levels on its own. So that's one really awesome quality of the silk paint. We don't need to water down the paint at all because it's got all of the qualities it needs in it already and it's not even very thick. Ideally, silk paint does take two coats. Just to make sure that it's got that full protection, you wanna make sure to always do two coats, even if you've got good coverage that first time. My original plan with these drawers was actually to also do these raw wood and then actually paint the rest of the outside of the dresser, but unfortunately two of the corners were chipped off, so I had to go ahead and fill those and fix those which means then that I'm not able to leave them raw wood. So I kind of reversed my idea and, and so now I'm gonna have the painted drawers instead of the painted top and kind of trim. The first coat of paint, no matter what type of paint, it's always very telling. And what I mean by that is that there, you know, a lot of the times, especially in older pieces, there's gonna be dents and dings and things like that. And you might not necessarily see them in their darker finish, but when you apply that first coat of paint, it's gonna be very obvious where those dents and dings are. And so sometimes, I go back and I use Dixie Mud or another wood filler to just fill in those areas to make them flush with the surface. And even now I can tell some areas where I need to go back and do that. And also where I fixed one of the corners, you know, I felt that it was flush to the surface, but really it's not. And so I am gonna go ahead and go back with the sander and sand that nice and smooth. And so I'll do another coat of paint on that. Um, both corners need a little bit more work, but overall these are looking really good and I'm excited to see how they turn out. overnight and then we'll be back tomorrow for coat number two as well as the paint wash. 
We're back. We let everything dry overnight, and so it's time for our paint wash on the top. I am going to be using burlap for the paint wash along with some water. So I've done this before, but basically all I'm going to be doing is adding a little bit of paint to a little bit of water. It's going to be about 50-50. 50% water, 50% paint. Maybe not quite 50% paint though. This type of paint wash, it acts as a stain. So instead of using the gel stains and things like that where you've gotta wait for a really long dry time, I tend to like to use the stain with to create my own stain with a paint wash, which you're just gonna water the paint down. So I'm just gonna make sure my paint is really mixed up well. I'm gonna pour a little bit. I've already got some water in my container here. And so I'm gonna pour just a little bit of the burlap in here as well, just to create our paint wash. So we've got a pretty good consistency here. It's very watery, but don't let it throw you off. That's what we want it to be like. So it'll soak up into that veneer top that we've got. And I'm just gonna be focusing on the top for right now. I'm gonna be using my Dixie Belle Mini and then I'm gonna brush it on and I'm gonna wipe it back with my lint-free cloth. Now that I've got the whole top painted, I'm gonna take my lint-free cloth and wipe it back. So now we see how that lightened things up quite a bit, and then also it's a very consistent color across the board. So now I'm gonna do it to the edges and to the two parts in the front that I sanded down, as well as the feet down below. That's it for the paint wash. While we've got it down here and flipped over, I'm gonna keep it like this so that I can get some spots that I missed with the Serenity Silk paint. And then I'll tip it back up and we'll go to coat number two. The second coat of the blue is all done. So we're just gonna let this dry. In the meantime, I am going to actually apply the top coat to where I did the paint wash. But remember, silk paint doesn't need a top coat, so I'm not gonna be applying one because it's all built in for the blue. But since that is a paint wash, I need to still protect that wood. So I'm gonna go grab my flat top coat and put that on. I'm gonna use my sponge, my blue sponge, to apply the top coat pretty quick. So I've got a little bit of top coat in the lid and I'm using the flat, which means just matte, no sheen, nothing. And I'm just gonna drag that across. I did dampen my blue sponge just a tad, tad bit, just to give it a little bit of moisture before I put that top coat on it. Try to always go in the same direction when you're doing top coats. But this blue sponge is really gonna help lessen those streak marks that you may get with a brush, especially on these lighter colors, like the paint washes. It's gonna be much easier to get rid of those streak marks. I'm just gonna go over wherever I did the paint wash so that I can do that protector level. Okay, top coat is on. We need to let this all dry and then we'll assemble the dresser and we'll be finished. It's time to put the hardware back on. Everything's dry and I just decided to keep the original hardware because one, I couldn't find some in my stash that had the same 
length, and then two, I thought that the hardware was pretty, pretty neat. And just like that, we're all put back together and this dresser is in its final state and ready to be listed on Facebook Marketplace. That's where I typically list my pieces to sell. And I am really pleased with how this looks. Um, again, at the beginning, I was unsure, you know, I wanted something to happen and it wasn't able to happen. So I was able to just be a little bit flexible. And since I had to fix these corners of the drawers, which you can't even tell with the paint over them, but since I had to do that, then I had to change around my plans. But in the end, I think it looks pretty good. And I think that it kind of got like a coastal, mid-century modern style, if you will. So I'm excited to get this staged up and listed over on Facebook Marketplace. Let's head over to the staging wall. So this is where I put all of my pieces for photos and then we make sure to take some pretty good photos of a lot of different angles of the piece. That way the person or the people who are looking at my listing on Facebook Marketplace are able to see everything about the dresser as well as able to just imagine it in their own home. So. Overall, like I said, I really like this flip. I hope you guys enjoyed this process and just, just we're able to remember that you don't always have to do painting, that you can also, you know, save this raw, real wood. It's a really trendy thing right now to even have that lighter color wood as opposed to the darker color wood. So just keep that in mind when you're making your style decisions and your decisions when you are flipping furniture. So thanks so much for watching on this FFT Friday. Get subscribed down below here to Dixie Bell's channel, but also get subscribed over on my channel furniture flipping teacher and we release videos every thursday and then you can have one on fridays here as well so thanks everyone for watching and i'll see you on the flip side